Our next panel is on emerging quantum programs. Uh, the moderator of this panel is Ona Ambrosetti from Johns Hopkins Science Diplomacy Lab. And the panelists are Paulo Cesaro Telabraga from the Embassy of Brazil, Claudia San Martin from the Embassy of Chile, Dr. Peter Cavalier from the Office of the Government of the Czech Republic, and Jarmo Sareva, Consulate General of Finland in New York. Please join me in welcoming Ona, Paulo, Claudia, Peter, and Jarmo. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. So it's, this is, a, I think, a very unique uh, global uh, quantum science diplomacy panel that we'll have today. It'll be interactive, and uh, we'll, we're hoping that you'll enjoy this as much as we do. Uh, so first, I would just like to give an overview that today's panel, uh, again, will have the global perspective, the global quantum science diplomacy angle about all the different ecosystems that we have here by showcasing perspectives from Finland, from Chile, Brazil, and Czech Republic. And we'll shed light on what the countries are thinking of in terms of the quantum uh, international science and technology uh, areas, and also how their respective societies perceive this and highlight the growth of the private sector initiatives in this field as well. So I would like to, first of all, introduce our panelists today, and I'll start uh, with uh, uh, Jarmo Sareva, who was uh, Ambassador and Consul General of Finland in New York since September 2022. His previous posting having been that of Ambassador for Cyber Affairs in Helsinki. Jarmo has served in Moscow, Washington, Vienna, and New York with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and in New York and Geneva with the United Nations. Ambassador Sareva holds a master's degree from JHU, SAIS. So welcome, Jarmo. Next up is uh, Claudia San Martin, um, who is a diplomat with more than 15 years of experience in Chile's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. She has specialized in scientific diplomacy, specifically in Ant Antarctica and astronomy. She is currently responsible for the environment, critical minerals, energy, and science and technology area at the Embassy of Chile in the United States of America. Next up is um, Paula uh, Cesaro Rotella Braga, who has been a career diplomat since 2008, currently serving as a science and technology attaché at the Embassy of Brazil in Washington, D.C. His previous diplomatic posts include assignments at the Brazilian embassies in Paraguay and Argentina. Uh, Braga holds a bachelor's degree in history from the University of Sao Paulo and a postgraduate degree in environment and sustainability from Fundacio Getulio Vargas. Uh, he is also a PhD candidate in sustainability and environmental management at the University of Sao Paulo. And last but not least is Pedro Cavalier, who is uh, the Special Envoy for Quantum Technologies under the Deputy Prime Minister for Digitalization and Minister for Science, Research and Technology in the Czech Republic. In this role, he is responsible for overseeing the development of the Czech National Quantum Strategy. Additionally, he serves as Vice Chair of the Innovation and Technology Experts Group at Business at OECD and is a member of the Expert Committee for Research and Development at the Confederation of the Industry of the Czech Republic. So welcome all, and I'm Ona Ambrosete, co-director of the Johns Hopkins Science Diplomacy Hub. So again, we're really happy to see you all here today for lots of quantum science diplomacy. So we'll start uh, with a fun question, I hope, um, where again, we have many countries represented here on the panel from Czech Republic, Brazil, Chile, uh, Finland. And if each of you could pick three words uh, to describe what quantum information science and technology area means to your country, what would they be and why? So we'll start with Petr from Czech Republic. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, three words, I would say the first one is uh, opportunity, second one would be prosperity, and the third one would be sustainable future. And the, the first one, opportunity, it's because uh, our country is traditionally very into industry, very into innovations, and I, we all see that the quantum technologies uh, bring a new step forward in the innovation and, uh, and the development, so that's the opportunity for us. Uh, the second one was uh, prosperity. So that's obvious when we are able to, to uh, work with all the innovations of what, which quantum technologies bring 
uh, we will be able to uh, bring the prosperity to our our society and the nations. And with go it go with it goes uh, also the sustainable future because with all these inventions and opportunities we will be able to better uh, use our resources and uh, energy and so on. Thank you, Paula. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, I agree with my colleague from Czech Republic. Opportunity was also part of my, my chosen words uh, for a country as Brazil. Developing quantum science is an opportunity to, to develop important sectors, agriculture, semiconductors, and also innovation uh, for a country who wants to, to join the group of people leading the, the quantum science. Uh, innovation is a key resource to, to have this leap and to start new technologies. And I, will, I would add also collaboration, especially from our perspective, collaboration with developing countries, but also South-South South, South collaboration. It's uh, a key factor for Brazil. We have a, a good network in Brazil that we can spend to our friends in, in, in South America and Africa and also Asia as well. And so that would be my three words, innovation, collaboration, and opportunity. Thank you, Paula. Well, thank you for this invitation. And I feel a little bit intimidated because of the world expert in quantum probably is here. I don't came from the science side, I came to the other side. So I hope this is interesting also for you. Uh, in three words, probably it will be competitiveness because Chile has the opportunity to position to itself as a relevant player at the regional and also after in the international player in this area. Also, uh, a connectivity, because I bring the perspective of a faraway country insulated for, for many years, uh, which found in the technology the connection with the world. So this new technology is very important for us. And the third one is security. We are working on a regulatory farm work uh, to this new technology to avoid malicious use. So this is the third one. Great, thank you, Claudia. Yarma. Well, um, looks like great, mind, great minds uh, think very much alike because uh, the three words that I have chosen uh, overlap with uh, what we have uh, heard before. Um, my first word is uh, forerunner. Uh, as you may have seen, uh, Finland uh, is very much visible here, uh, present, Finnish companies. Um, we do punch above uh, our weight in, uh, in quantum uh, uh, information, uh, science and technology. And uh, this is due to a number of reasons that I will be dwelling on a bit later. Uh, the second word is innovation that uh, we have heard uh, before. This is a tremendously innovative uh, field. It's uh, exciting to be here for the second year in a row and to hear that uh, so much progress has been made through innovation over the past uh, 12 months uh, in this field. And the third one over, also overlaps uh, its opportunity because uh, uh, quantum information science and technology uh, has great promise to improve lives, to better lives, to uh, Make, uh, to help humanity um, towards progress by leaps and bounds, really. Uh, but then, having said that, uh, we have to bear in mind that, uh, as with all technologies in human history, um, these technologies can be also used uh, for malicious and, uh, and uh, sinister uh, purposes. So we need to make sure that uh, we work together to thwart that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Jarmo. That feeds really nicely into the next question, um, and that's the reason why I think I wanted us to talk about these three words, for example, three priorities that every country has, uh, because we also know about the national quantum agendas that many countries have announced, right, that will help them maintain leadership in different areas of the quantum ecosystem, right, whether it's identification, right, and uh, creation. Um, of the use cases of an adoption right, of the use cases of quantum technologies. So, with that in mind, briefly, um, could you tell us more about what the quantum information science technology QIST priorities are for your countries and 
if you have noticed, for example, a shift uh, of some kind or involvement in that area, what, what that is? And Yarma, we'll start with you. Uh, in Finland's case, we, uh, to those of you who don't know Finland all that much, um, I, I'd like to stress that we have a very strong scientific uh, uh, base. Uh, we are a country of uh, great engineers and great uh, te technologies. Uh, and uh, when it comes to quantum, uh, especially uh, the scientific base in, in uh, SAPRA and photonics uh, allow us a natural uh, environment uh, to also commercialize uh, um, our, our know-how. We have uh, deep tech startups, not only in uh, quantum, but also in uh, many other areas. Uh, now, we are looking for benefits coming from uh, quantum to priority areas such as biomedical, chemical industry, uh, material science, uh, climate science and, and climate uh, technology. But I would stress that um, there's uh, going to be enormous disruption ahead. Uh, we can sense it here, looking at uh, all the uh, uh, quantum technologies that are present here. There will be winners, there will be losers, but the disruption will also extend uh, way well beyond, well beyond uh, quantum information science and technology itself. So we need to be ready for that uh, disruption. We don't know when and how it comes and who will emerge as, as winners, but we need to be prepared. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Key's preparedness being proactive, not reactive. Uh, Claudia, please. Yes, uh, thank you. The priority for Chile, the first one, and it's not new one, is development of infrastructure and then the scientific capabilities. Uh, we focus first in support the, the create the research centers, uh, also a specialization of scientific community. The second one is the promotion of innovation, a uh, business creation, because we think that in the case of quantum technology is very close to the private sector. So support of the new company. We have two now, Secure and Maki, that are working very hard in cybersecurity. And also collaboration with the private sector, as I mentioned, attracting investment, and supportly the commercialization, because for us it's important that this new company have a good place for development. No? Uh, the third one is establish of regulation and a standard. Actually, we have a quantum technology commission. Uh, it's a group of eight person who this day, this week, it will give an advice to the government on how could, how could we advance in this area. And finally is the promotion of quantum technology and education and training, not also in the academy level if not also at the student. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and workforce is actually something we'll touch at the very end <laughs> of the panel, so it's a nice preview or a hint of what we'll talk about. Yeah, Paolo. Mm -hmm. Yes, oh, it's a good question because we just started last June, the Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation established a work group to identify priorities and to align common guidelines to our quantum science. So they are in the process of, of writing a report. We just uh, released last, last month a report on AI with the same characteristic. We reunited business people, academia, the ministers, the government, institutions to identify and to align what we want in quantum with what we have in our national strategy for science, technology and innovation. Mm -hmm. I think part of the development of the technology to understand how it brings development to our country the intention is to have a technological independence as much as we can. So we are in the process of formulating these priorities. I will ha be happy to share with you as <laughs> since we have the document. But we have a work in being done in Brazil and I, the idea is to 
to reunite those I, those brains and to think together what would be the main priorities for Brazil. So we are very happy to establish this working group and we are looking forward for the results. Right. Me, me too, us as well. Yeah, so, <laughs> so we'll yeah. We'll hear about them soon. Thank you. Uh, now, let me. Well, I'm, I'm responsible for writing the, the <laughs> or getting together the national quantum strategy of the Czech Republic. And as I said, we are a middle-sized uh, European country and collaborating within the Europe. And we closely collaborate also with Finland. All right, uh, uh, next to my door is uh, my new Finnish colleague uh, from quantum technologies. So it, because I'm also the uh, CEO of the research center. But uh, in terms of uh, our, our priorities, we have strong uh, background or strong teams in uh, all the areas like quantum computing, quantum communication, quantum sensing, and metrology and materials. So we would like to maintain this strong uh, uh, scientific uh, basic research base and would like to be, uh, would like to partner with uh, all our partners from the uh, like-minded countries and be involved into, into the research and uh, innovations uh, worldwide. Uh, we are partnering with, uh, with uh, all the countries uh, that, uh, that are here and uh, we would like to maintain that. So basically, I would say that uh, the situation is, uh, the priority is to be involved into the value chain in the research as well as innovation and transfer of the knowledge. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that overview. So now um, I would like to go in any order. It should be you know, fun, fun and, uh, to discuss this. So we all know, and I'm coming from my quantum materials science uh, hat here, where quantum is not an easy field for a yeah. lot of us to understand, right? Um, so this is a challenge that, for example, we at the Johns Hopkins Science Diplomacy Hub um, are trying to address by convening diverse stakeholders, um, like we did during the Global Quantum Strategies Overview event on Sunday, and that was a preamble to the QWC, where we have everyone from diplomacy, policy, science, uh, private sector, nonprofits, and, and all of that to, to speak and translate that uh, complexity. So I wonder how do your respective societies perceive this uh, quantum information science technology area and uh, what efforts exist in each of the countries um, that uh, what kind of strategies right uh, that would help us to translate this complexity to whether it's the broader society whether it's diplomats um, or anyone else so who would like to start uh, in Finland's case uh, again because as I said before we are a country of uh, engineers and a uh, very strong scientific uh, and engineering base. There's an, kind of an inherent uh, faith in technology and uh, its power to transform societies uh, for the better. And you know, there's uh, faith in technology and there's a certain optimism about uh, the, possibility, uh, the possibilities uh, uh, that uh, various technologies can create. And this um, is reflected also in how Finnish bureaucrats, like myself uh, in the foreign ministry or my colleagues in other ministries, uh, um, uh, think about uh, various technologies, in including uh, quantum. Now, uh, also the fact that we are a small country where there's a tradition of uh, people being able to work across the aisle in a triple helix model, uh, it, has, it means that uh, this kind of a, uh, through osmosis, we, we help each other understand um, rather complex uh, issues. Uh, also, uh, quantum has received uh, pretty good publicity in Finnish media, um, not least because of, uh, uh, of some of the Finnish uh, quantum companies, but also because of the supercomputer Lumi, um, in, uh, which is uh, one of the top ones uh, globally, and uh, which works with the Helmi uh, research quantum computer uh, to kind of, uh, double the capacity uh, of, uh, of uh, computing. Uh, I just got an idea, because uh, the University of Helsinki uh, has uh, 
turned another rather complex issue, artificial intelligence, intelligence into so-called MOOCs, uh, Massive Online Open Courses. Uh, there's one on uh, elements, called one called Elements of uh, AI, and another one called uh, Ethics of AI. Why not team up with uh, uh, Johns Hopkins University mm -hmm. to create a MOOC on quantum? Just, uh, just an idea. I like that. We will work on it. So, thank you so much, Yarmo. Yeah. Anyone likes to jump in? Yeah. Um, well, I think that the first is that the people can see the quantum technology is part of their life now. Mm. It's not in a long future. No. So, in that way, we work in uh, education and training, as I mentioned and also organize event and conference, open not only to scientific work, we also went to a point to our child and the young people, because we need to wake up the interest in this kind of technology, and also because we need that they choose a STEM career and also quantum area, no? Um, and in that way, the, the university that they have program with quantum field, they create some specific areas that share with the community local and local school uh, program, not so complicated. With, um, uh, with, they create a dialogue with the population interest in this kind of field. So the idea is sensibilize to the population, to this technology, and don't see so far away. Thank you. I guess we're going in that order, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah for, from Brazil, sometimes we are most known by our soccer team, but uh, part of our uh, work as a tech diplomats is to portray Brazil as a, a opportunity country for cooperation and for also for technology. We have a network of more than 60 diplomats around the world who work specifically with science and technology. And I congratulate the, I congratulate the work that John Hopkins does with tech diplomats here in the capital. It's very important for us. We still have a, a gap on the education of engineers and trainings. We are more as a, a law country, as we say, we have a, a huge network of law schools, but uh, we have such some powerhouse of engineers as well, especially in, in Rio, in the Brazilian Center for Physics Research, University of Sao Paulo, the CIMATEC in Salvador. So part of, of, of our job as diplomats abroad is to see collaborations to the centers in Brazil. We have a lot of Brazilians that are established here in other countries of the world that uh, we try to bring them home. Sometimes they don't want to go home because the opportunities here are very, very good. But every scientist that I've talked to, they want to cooper cooperate with Brazil. They want to give back to the country. So uh, we, we aim to create this bridge between the Brazilians who are here with the institutions they left in Brazil and also to bring Brazilians to study here and come back. So the Minister of Foreign Affairs has developed the science and technology, the innovation program since 2015 with the idea of promoting Brazil as a science powerhouse as well. So it's an uh, it's ongoing project, uh, this, this kind of, uh, of talks and, and, and opportunities that we have here, it's very interesting for us because we want to, to bring more people, more attention for the Brazilian science as well. Right. It's nice that you try. You know, it's hard to bring people back sometimes, but it's yeah. necessary. Yeah, that's, yeah. Mm. I, I would divide it into three areas. Uh, one would be researchers and experts. They all are very excited about quantum. So there is no need to, to work uh, with them about awareness and about working on, on the quantum technologies and science. Uh, the second, second large group is uh, the public administration. That is more difficult. Uh, there we are doing kind of uh, guerrilla marketing that we are going uh, around the various ministries and giving, uh, giving uh, lectures and uh, some, some education about uh, the quantum technologies. We also prepared uh, a course for our diplomats. 
So they, they know what uh, quantum technologies are about and they know the potential that uh, is in it, in, in uh, foreign collaboration or global collaboration. And the third one is, uh, is uh, general public and uh, it is also very important. So we are trying to, to increase the awareness uh, we are doing some hackathons, we are doing uh, some conferences, we also have uh, science museums preparing, uh, preparing some exhibitions for, for the general public and to educate uh, also the, the uh, young generation and also their parents as well, not to be afraid uh, of the uh, quantum science and technologies. Right, as Claudia mentioned, quantum is now, so we might as well educate right, the society to be ready. And um, from my personal experience, demos, for example, where you have something simple like a piece of plastic and you can play around with the tape, the number of layers you have to showcase any quantum effects so people realize this is not a mystery that we're talking about. It's actual science and it can be understood. So um, now we cannot talk about the quantum uh, information science technology system, ecosystem without talking about the private sector role here. Um, so how have you witnessed the involvement of the private sector uh, in this quantum uh, QIST area in your countries and is there anything in particular you would like to highlight with regards to public-private partnership or any other initiatives that exist there? So again, anyone can start. Well, I'll start. Uh, uh, as I said, we have uh, pretty good uh, basic research. Uh, what we do not uh, have is, uh, you know, many startups. Uh, we are trying to improve it. Uh, uh, we are collaborating with the, with our partners in Israel just to uh, bring some uh, some startup uh, nation minds and uh, mindset. Uh, we are also uh, supporting it through various agencies to support. Uh, students and uh, young researchers to establish their own uh, own uh, companies. So in, in that terms, uh, we uh, still have a long way to go. What is quite good that we've got some venture funds that are also helping us uh, to, to invest into this. Mm -hmm. that's, that's really great. And we also have uh, uh, present uh, some international or global companies uh, that uh, already uh, are were established in, in the quantum technologies and science, and uh, that is helping a lot as well. Mm -hmm. That PC is also there. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, for Brazil, the ecosystem, I think that the main characteristic is the relationship between academia and the private sector. Uh, the basic research that we, we do in universities is transforming in products for the, the private sector. I would like to highlight one center, the Quantum Industrial Innovation Center at Cimatec in Salvador, in the northeast of Brazil. It's not the, the, the most developed part of Brazil, and that's interesting because it brings diversity, brings different kinds of, of, of solutions that you have to, to, to think. And it's, it's made in an open business mind, so business people can, can work in the laboratory, can partner with the, the Cimatec Center to produce new technologies. Also, Rio de Janeiro is doing the, the Rio network bringing together universities and private sector to develop new technologies. Sao Paulo also is an is a important hub for technology. The FAPESP, who is the foundation from Sao Paulo State, they, they are the main, main foundation for innovation in Brazil. And only Sao Paulo have more than 100 centers or, or professionals that are working with quantum technology somehow. Uh, private sector, sector in Brazil is still striving, is still developing, but mainly through government uh, support and academia support. And that's, that's something that worked for us in, in other areas, like the support that the university gave to the private sector is fundamental in a country like Brazil. So, and, and for me, especially, it's, we, are, we are very proud to spread this technology in the four regions of Brazil trying to bring innovation to centers that are not well known for, for science and technology. So this will bring different kind of solutions to different kind of sustainable development goals, something that's important to Brazil. We, still, we have a, a, a clear target of sustainability as well as my colleague from Czech Republic said. So 
uh, to spread in different areas of Brazil, it's very important to bring different solutions to quantum technologies. All right, that's great to hear, right? Quantum access, right, to these technologies also is really important, right? When you spread to regions that otherwise might not be able to engage with the hotspots, let's say, so, you know. Yes, world. exactly. And I think the same works for the world. When you, when you start thinking from different perspectives, mm -hmm. different parts of the world, you bring different solutions to the table, different views to the table. Uh, sometimes, uh, as I said, like Brazil probably is not the number one when you, sure. when you think about quantum technology mm -hmm. or other countries from the global south, but they will certainly bring different people, different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And in technology, we know that we have to be creative to find new solutions. So that's the invitation that I, 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 <laughs> I let you right. to, to approach us and to start new business in Brazil as well. Mm -hmm. Exactly, diversity of thought. I mean, that's, that's part of science, right? So, yeah, for sure. Good, so Claudia. Mm -hmm. mm, well, the, the private sector in the case of Chile have a very important role. I think that as Paolo mentioned, you know, the, the sector price cap, the capacity of connect the academy uh, the public sector and the other actor, you know, and also push to the other actor to react mm -hmm. and show us how it's important in this case the quantum system. You no, know? for example, create um, new position and a specialized worker, and in the case of state, show us that we need a framework or regulation specifically. And in the case of Chile, for example, the private sector participate in the uh, specific commission that I'm working now. So yes, it's, it's very important, and, as, and it is important uh, in the dialogue mm -hmm. of the development of, of this uh, technology. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, as for, for the Finnish private sector, it's uh, visible out there. You know, Blue Force has its own stand uh, outside. Uh, Finland has a, a uh, stand uh, featuring uh, several companies. Um, I also, I, I already referred to the strong tradition of public-private partnerships, the triple helix model, and that has really um, uh, created uh, a deep tech uh, uh, spin-off culture, which uh, is, uh, is pretty strong. And uh, overall, for a country our size, um, we have a strong uh, startup uh, sector. I would also uh, single out uh, the VTT Technical Research Center, um, the uh, largest uh, research institute for applied research uh, in the Helsinki metro area. Uh, VTT uh, has, uh, has brainchilded uh, so many deep tech uh, startups. Some of, uh, some of which are, are here. And uh, finally, uh, as for the KPIs, you know, VTT's own KPIs uh, include a strong commitment and, uh, and mandate uh, for their customers' success. And even at the legislative level, uh, the relevant legislation that, uh, that uh, relates to public funding of uh, research and development. Uh, it has a KPI of sorts in the sense that uh, it calls for every euro spent uh, on public uh, research and development to uh, generate at least two euros uh, from uh, private sources. That's very interesting. Yeah, well, thank you for sharing that statistic. Okay, so um, we have about 10 minutes or so left. Time flies when you're having fun. Uh, so I'll tie in the last two questions that we had um, and touch on the transnational partnerships in QIST. Um, if you would like to highlight, for example, examples of international cooperation that your countries have fostered in this space as they relate to also the field of science diplomacy that, again, Johns Hopkins Science Diplomacy Hub, we're trying to um, you know, spearhead their connecting countries through science and as that goes along with the brain circulation for example right as well um, about uh, the quantum education and workforce initiatives how 
how does that relate to your efforts, right? And like Claudia again mentioned already, I think a few times the efforts that are going on in Chile, um, but if you could tie in your answers to, as well as it relates to the quantum workforce in that regard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah let, me, let me start uh, very briefly on uh, partnerships. Uh, we see them obviously as uh, hugely important. And for us, uh, traditionally, uh, Nordic uh, partnerships with our Nordic uh, neighbors, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, Iceland, have been uh, extremely important. And uh, of course, European uh, collaboration in uh, scientific cooperation is uh, of, of uh, huge importance. But I would also mention our uh, joint statement with the United States that uh, was signed in April uh, 2022, which uh, brings together Finnish and American quantum researchers, public officials, and uh, company representatives, and uh, it aims at uh, promoting research and innovation projects and uh, also commercial uh, cooperation between the two countries. As for, um, uh, as for education and uh, workforce development, just uh, a few points. Firstly, this is actually a wider challenge. It's not only about uh, quantum, it's the entire STEM field, how to, uh, how to entice young people uh, to not only uh, be interested in studying STEM in higher education and to choose that as a career, but also be equipped uh, after secondary education with those skills that they can actually realistically uh, do it. Now, uh, we are a small country, so we also need to look for talent from overseas. And there we are competing with uh, very much the same talent pool as, uh, as everybody else. Uh, in Finland, coming back to higher education, and this is my final point, uh, you know, kind of the corporate view, um, the, the, the view of the business community, uh, especially in, uh, in STEM and, uh, and uh, 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 business, business education, that is usually pretty well reflected in what universities uh, end up teaching and to what extent, because there's a constant dialogue between higher education authorities uh, and institutions and uh, the business sector. So I would, uh, I would uh, highlight that as my final point. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you, Arma, for mentioning that link, especially that I think a lot of people are not aware of. So, yeah, Claudia, with that. Yeah, when in the case of Chile, we don't produce a lot of technology, no? We are in that way, in that moment. So, but we consume a lot of the technology. So, we don't have doubt that the international field and dimension is very important for us. And we are on that now. Uh, create connections and also create a group of scientists who could, who could connect with scientists to the other country and also the sector price doing a great job in that area. No? I already mentioned the work that the university is doing. So I only want to mention um, two examples. One of them is a Q Santiago conference. This was in the January of this year. Um, organized for the University of Santiago and also uh, participate with the sector private. And the second one is an initiative called Girls in Quanto. It was created for a young Chilean woman uh, of 17 years old who connect uh, women in different places of work around the quantum uh, interest. So we are very proud of that. Right. And we're also aware of uh, her, and it's super, super impressive in general. So, yeah. Yeah, I think I, I met her in John Hopkins. Yes, it yes, yeah, so we actually hosted. Yes. Uh, yes, a young girl teaching quantum to a young girl. Yeah. <laughs> so it's something that we should do. Like I, I was talking to a, a colleague from from the science field in Brazil, and she teaches girls in the space, like about space weather yeah. and space. Uh, technologies is just saying I'm trying to reach out to the youngest possible girls out there because we need to convince them that they are capable of studying these issues 
uh, since the beginning and to attract them to this technology. Uh, regarding the diplomatic ties, we have a variety of, of agreements with different countries, especially with the US. Next year, you're going to have the Joint Commission on Science Technology. Quantum will be part of that nego negotiation or these this dialogues. But also something that I learned from working here in the US is that between institutions, between universities, the dialogue is fluid. They talk to each other a lot. They don't need the government to talk, and it's a, it's a good point because yeah. they have their own cooperation. Sometimes now today it's easier for a, an expert of professor to connect directly to the professor of other institutions. Mm -hmm. And something that we are trying to do in Brazil is uh, there is a say that if you want to attract butterflies to our garden, you have first to plant your beautiful garden. It's, that's what we are doing. We are trying to strive in the, the infrastructure and the academia mm -hmm. for quantum to attract talent people to work with. So mm -hmm. that's where we are now. It's really interesting, the subnationals and diplomacy, right? That's something that we have touched on in our science diplomacy work at the Johns Hopkins University, not necessarily in quantum, but in other fields like sustainable agriculture, which quantum will have impacts on, um, you know, at some point. And that is, for example, with Ghent University that we're fostering. So just you know, universities are there and they're making that and building those gardens that can attract them, the butterflies. I yeah. like that saying a lot. Thank you, Paulo. Yeah, and Petra. Yeah, we are fully open, uh, economy uh, oriented to export, so uh, global co collaboration is uh, crucial for us and I, I would say that in the science uh, today that it is not possible without the global collaboration uh, of, the, of the countries uh, because uh, otherwise uh, it, it will not work. So we've got uh, many agreements with, uh, with various countries in between universities, it, it flows uh, very well. Uh, and uh, just we are supporting it. Uh, we, we have uh, very good collaboration with Japan, Israel, South Korea, United States, of course, thanks for invitation. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the crucial point is, uh, is what was uh, said here, is uh, the seek for talent. And uh, talents in quantum technologies is scarce. And we, we should all uh, work on bringing new uh, new programs, university programs, but we should go even uh, lower high school just to go, do some awareness uh, to teach uh, teachers how to bring the, uh, the, the, the students, uh, how to draw their attention toward uh, STEM activities and quantum activities as well. Right, exactly, because that's something we have emphasized a lot, whether today in this conference or during our other science diplomacy, quantum, uh, focused convenings is that uh, we have to start early, right? Uh, we have to not just assume that everyone will have a PhD in quantum, uh, you know, science, and then um, we need we need those those early early students there as well. So I think I'll actually wrap up here. Um, it was a very fitting background that we had with all the flags behind us. Uh, so again, this is the Global Quantum Science Diplomacy panel that you just attended. So I would like to thank uh, my panelists, so Yarmo, Claudia, Paolo, and Petra for being here representing their countries. Uh, again, it's not easy to represent you know, all the quantum national agendas here. So thank you for doing that and thank you to the audience. We don't really see you, but we hope you enjoyed it as well. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you.